Neuroleptic malignant syndrome represents a severe, life-threatening idiosyncratic reaction to antipsychotic medications. The condition is characterized by a distinctive tetrad of clinical manifestations, hyperthermia, altered mental status, muscle rigidity, and autonomic dysfunction. Recognition of this syndrome is crucial for healthcare providers, as early intervention significantly impacts patient outcomes. Etiology and Risk Factors The primary etiology of NMS centers on exposure to antipsychotic medications, with typical neuroleptics such as haloperidol and flufenazine posing the highest risk. While atypical antipsychotics demonstrate a comparatively lower risk profile, they remain significant potential triggers. The abrupt cessation of dopaminergic agents, particularly in patients with Parkinson's disease, can also precipitate NMS. Several risk factors have been identified, including the utilization of high-potency antipsychotics, aggressive dose escalation protocols, underlying dehydration, and concurrent administration of multiple antidopaminergic agents. Healthcare providers should maintain heightened vigilance when these risk factors are present. Clinical Presentation The temporal evolution of NMS typically occurs over a period of hours to days, with the majority of symptoms manifesting within two weeks of exposure to the causative agent. The clinical presentation is marked by four cardinal features. Hyperthermia, often exceeding 40 degrees Celsius, represents a hallmark sign. Patients exhibit severe muscle rigidity, characteristically described as lead pipe in nature. Mental status alterations span a spectrum from mild confusion to coma. Autonomic instability manifests through various signs, including tachycardia, labeled blood pressure, diaphoresis, and urinary incontinence. It is imperative to note that the absence of any single feature does not preclude the diagnosis of NMS. Pathophysiology The underlying pathophysiology of NMS primarily involves an acute, severe reduction in dopaminergic neurotransmission. The central mechanism revolves around D2 receptor blockade, which triggers a cascade of neurological and systemic effects. Sympathetic nervous system dysregulation plays a crucial role in the autonomic manifestations observed. At the muscular level, Increased calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum results in sustained muscle contraction, ultimately leading to rhabdomyolysis. This complex pathophysiological interplay contributes to the diverse clinical manifestations observed in NMS. Diagnosis The diagnosis of NMS remains predominantly clinical, predicated on a comprehensive patient history, thorough physical examination, and supportive laboratory findings. Clinicians should maintain a high index of suspicion in patients with recent exposure to antipsychotic medications or changes in dopaminergic therapy. Laboratory evaluation typically reveals elevated creatine kinase levels, indicative of muscle damage, leukocytosis reflecting systemic stress, and various electrolyte imbalances. These laboratory abnormalities, while not pathognomonic, provide valuable supportive evidence for the diagnosis. Differential Diagnosis The clinical evaluation must consider several conditions that can mimic NMS. Serotonin syndrome presents similarly, but can be distinguished by the presence of hyperreflexia and clonus, which are typically absent in NMS. Malignant hyperthermia, an inherited disorder triggered by anesthetic agents, shares features with NMS but differs in its precipitating factors. Heat stroke may present with similar autonomic dysfunction and hyperthermia, but is differentiated by environmental exposure history and the absence of antipsychotic use. A methodical approach to these differential diagnoses ensures accurate diagnosis and appropriate management. Management The management of NMS demands a comprehensive approach beginning with immediate discontinuation of the suspected causative agent. Intensive supportive care forms the cornerstone of treatment, encompassing external cooling measures to address hyperthermia, aggressive intravenous fluid resuscitation to maintain adequate hydration and support renal function, 
and careful electrolyte monitoring and correction. Pharmacologic interventions may include bromocryptine, a dopamine agonist to counteract the central dopamine blockade, dantrolene for muscle relaxation, and benzodiazepines for agitation management. The treatment approach should be tailored to the individual patient's presentation and severity of symptoms. Prognosis and follow-up. With prompt recognition and appropriate management, the prognosis for NMS is generally favorable, with most patients achieving recovery within 2 to 14 days. However, the outcome is significantly influenced by several factors, including the timeliness of diagnosis, rapidity of treatment initiation, severity of the initial presentation, and the presence of comorbidities. Ongoing monitoring of clinical parameters and laboratory values is essential throughout the recovery period to ensure appropriate resolution of symptoms and address any potential complications. Mortality of NMS, which in the past ranged from 20 to 30 percent, has ranged from 4.7 percent at 30 days to 9.9 percent at 90 days and up to 15.1 percent at one year in more recent studies which suggests that there are late complications that may be fatal, such as aspiration pneumonia or renal failure. Antipsychotic Rechallenge The decision to reintroduce antipsychotic medication following an episode of NMS requires careful consideration of multiple factors. The severity of the initial NMS episode, availability of alternative therapeutic options, and a thorough risk-benefit assessment should guide clinical decision-making. When rechallenge is deemed necessary, a protocol utilizing a low-potency agent initiated at a minimal dose with gradual titration is recommended. Rigorous monitoring for any signs of recurrence is imperative throughout the rechallenge process. Take-home message. In the management of NMS, Maintaining a high clinical suspicion is paramount, particularly given that the absence of a single characteristic symptom does not exclude the diagnosis. The cornerstone of improved patient outcomes lies in prompt recognition and initiation of appropriate treatment. A multidisciplinary approach involving psychiatry, internal medicine, and critical care specialists ensures comprehensive patient care. Clinicians should remain vigilant for potential complications and be prepared to adjust management strategies as needed throughout the course of illness. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.